Hi, welcome to your virtual orientation for the J-Flight SLX 154BH by Jayco. We're going to start the orientation on the outside of the RV and we're going to start at the front. The first thing we're going to have a look at is your side marker light. We'll notice there's some extra thickness there. That is because it is pre-wired for a rear view camera. This can be purchased separately and there's one on either side at the front of the trailer. The next thing we'll look at is your battery storage area and your propane storage. It's a single 20 pound bottle of propane and wired up with a single battery. Right underneath your 20 pound propane bottle we'll find your safety breakaway switch. The safety breakaway switch is attached to your tow vehicle via the loop end. In the event that your tow vehicle is separated from the RV, the pin will get pulled from the housing, engaging the trailer brakes. If at any time you're attempting to move your trailer and you feel like the brakes are stuck on, it's a good idea to come and look at this as sometimes it can get partially pulled, engaging the trailer brakes, but not be fully removed from the housing. So always make sure that the pin is fully seated like that into the housing. We'll continue around the outside. We'll make note of the camera body on the opposite side, as well as your potable water input. This is where you'd fill your freshwater tank with clean water. If you were not gonna have access to water from a campground or at home. And directly below that, we'll see your city water connection. Basically, this is where you put your garden hose from either your house or the campground in order to pressurize the system inside the RV. Uh, then you can use the water much like you would use your water at home. Right next door to this, we have the outside access to our water tank. A couple things that are important here. A drain and drain cap and your pressure relief valve. If ever removing the drain cap, always open your pressure relief valve to remove pressure from the system first. And if we slide over just a little wee bit, we'll come to your 30 amp power cord. This is what you connect to the power at your campground or home. Now I realize most of you don't have a 30 amp plug on the outside of your home. And that is why we provide a 15 amp uh, conversion block so you can still run some of the appliances inside. If you look right next door, you see the venting for your refrigerator. This venting must remain free of obstruction at all times in order for your refrigerator to work properly. Here we'll find the main input for cable and satellite TV to the RV. And we'll see the vent hood for your range hood. Now when closing it up, you want to close this. However, before you use it, make sure you pop that open. There's just little tabs here in order for the range hood to actually vent properly. As we crouch down here, we'll see the output for your black and gray water tanks, as well as valve handles for both the black and the gray water tanks. At the back here, you see one of two stabilization jacks. They're located at the two rear corners of the RV and they're to be used to stabilize, not to level. So you should have your RV level fully before you engage the stabilization jacks and then you merely just snug them up to the ground. Depending on how level the ground is and how far they have to go, you may require some extra blocking. Also, if you're looking for your sewer hose, there it is, brand new. As we continue along the outside, we have a small storage compartment here and 120 volt power underneath your awning. Let's step inside and we'll take a look. First thing we'll do is we'll turn around and look down at your fire extinguisher. 
It's important to know where this is. I like its placement right by the door. That way if you're barbecuing and needed, it is readily accessible, but it is also accessible inside the unit near the cooking surface as well. Just inside your door to the left, you'll find controls for your awning, switches for the main lights of the RV, as well as your awning light. And we'll also have the main output for your cable or satellite, as well as 12 volt power capabilities. Take a look next at your thermostat. It's pretty straightforward. Slide this lever at the top to turn the uh, unit on and to control the temperature. Now we'll take a look at your air conditioner. There's an off, on or off mode, uh, but there's also an energy saver mode. You can run just the fan and you can run the fan on an auto setting, low, medium or high. As well, you can set this to cool, uh, to auto, to dry, or just to use the fan. There is an indication light here to let you know if the filter needs to be cleaned. And there is also a timer function. Next, we'll take a look at the emergency exit for the RV. In order to use this emergency exit, you'll press down on this black tab, push the red handle up and out. And then until it's perpendicular with the wall of the RV, then you can push it all the way out. Once that's all the way out, you pull the red tab, remove the screen, and you can escape to safety. Now, as you will turn and see here, a couple things. One, we've got the table set up mostly for bed mode here. There are legs for the table. Right underneath there that you can see. You merely pull it out, stand those up, and you've got a table instead of a bed. Also under here, we have your carbon monoxide pain detector. There's a button on the front here that you can press to test the unit. It will issue a series of loud beeps. That's why I'm not going to press it now. You don't need to listen to that. And when it's all done beeping, it'll turn back to green, and a solid green light here would indicate that it is working properly. I usually recommend pressing it every six months to make sure it's functioning properly. The reason why I suggest that is that is the general recommendations for your smoke detector right here. It's usually recommended you change the batteries every six months during daylight savings time. That way it's just easy to remember. Also underneath, we have your load center or power center for the unit. You will notice in here that we have breakers, much like you would see in your house. And they function pretty much the same way. And we have your circuits here with your fuses, much like you'd see in your vehicle. There is a red light that will indicate that uh, there is a problem with one of the fuses if it is burnt out. So if it burns out, you will see a red light. Come on. And we'll take a look at your refrigerator. This refrigerator will run on gas or electric. Put it in the on position. If there is an issue with it running on gas, you will see this check light come on and stay on. The fridge will attempt to light three times. If it's unable to light, then it'll shut itself down and this light will come on. If that happens, I would turn it off and then go up front, make sure you, the valves are open out front on the propane, if they are. Give it a minute and just could be an issue of not enough pressure to light the appliance. Uh, it also runs on electric. It'll automatically switch between propane or electric. If the, uh, electricity is present, it will always choose it first. As we stand up here, you'll notice we have your indication panel. This is where you'll come to see your battery levels, your fresh water tank level, your black and gray water tank levels. You'll also find switching for your water pump and for your water heater on gas or electricity. Right next door to your indication panel, you have your unit GFCI plug. You will see a red light that comes on here. I can't do that right now as we're running off the battery. That would only uh, work if the plug is actually working and it needs 120 volts to work. So, if this were to be tripped though, this red light would come on, indicating that this plug isn't functioning. 
In that instance, come, you'd hit the top button to reset. And once it's reset, any plugs that are on the load side of the GFCI, that would be perhaps a plug in outside or the plugs on your counter, anything near, near water, they wouldn't work if this is tripped. So if those aren't working, come in here, press the reset and then give it a try and see if perhaps they are working. Next, we'll come to your range top. There's a light position here and here. We turn this knob to the light position and then you light the burners individually with a barbecue lighter or match or whatever you're comfortable with. We have your bunk system. Just to briefly show you, your bunk has the same emergency exit that I showed you earlier and it functions the same way. If there are kids sleeping in the bunk, I recommend uh, making sure they know how to use it. And your bathroom. A nice size tub. And I always like the skylights. They add a lot of extra light. The other thing that we will notice is that on the wall here, we have this wired for solar. What this means is if you purchase it separately, you can buy the head unit to go inside to use with a solar panel and solar system if, if you choose to purchase those. There is pre-wiring right here and a spot to install the head unit to work with your solar connection if you choose to, to purchase that. Okay, one of the last things I want to show you is your water pump and hot water tank access. So here we have the backside of your hot water tank. And you will see we have one, two valves. Right now, those two valves are pointing in towards the hot water tank. What that will indicate is that your hot water tank is set up to be used. So this is what you'd call summer mode. Your water will go in and out of the hot water tank. If you're trying to winterize though, you want to turn these valves so they go this way and that's in line with this tube which would be the bypass for your hot water tank. You would use that in winter mode or when you're going to winterize the RV as you don't need to fill your tank full of antifreeze. There's just no need for it. It's a waste of antifreeze. And then right next to there you can see your fresh water tank but we also see your water pump and the fill tube for your water pump. This is the end that you would stick in your antifreeze jug if you're trying to winterize. To do that, we have to make sure that this valve is pointing in the right direction. So right now, this valve is pointing in the direction of the tube going into the freshwater tank. So this is set up to draw from the freshwater tank. Now I have it pointing towards the fill tube. Right here, it's pointing this direction towards this fill tube. That means it is open and we'll now use the fill tube to winterize. We'll put it back in the summer mode. So that wasn't too bad to get that out and get access to it. Pretty easy actually. Let's take a quick look at your radio. So we have USB charging capabilities. We have HDMI connectivity as well as Bluetooth connectivity. And we have two zones, zone one and two. Zone one is inside the RV and zone two is outside underneath the uh, awning on the speakers outside. The speakers that are on the, the ends of the awning and the, uh, and the heads of the awning. You can uh, play zone one by itself, zone two by itself, or you can play both zones together or just shut them all off. That does it for the virtual orientation. I hope you found it useful and informative. I think we've covered everything we need to cover. If you feel like I've missed something or didn't spend enough time on something that you have more questions about, don't hesitate to call in and we will help you get any information and that you need to enjoy your RV. Thank you.